click the link in the description to download your own copy of this video's problem. Hey guys, Russell, welcome back to another fantastic chemistry video. And today we're going to talk about E2 eliminations with stereochemistry. What does the stereochemistry have to do with E2 elimination? Does it affect it? Does it change the outcome? Let's find out. All right, so now we're dealing with this right here and this right here under the exact same conditions. So the conditions are the same. First thing you have to realize is that this and that are related. They're diastereomers. So diastereomers are different. So they should give you different products. This is not the same as that. So you should get different products out here. That's what we expect. Let's see if we get it. So these are E2 conditions, 100% E2, no question. Strong base, going to be E2. So now, E2 requires one thing that's very special. Um, Anticoplanar transition states. Anticoplanar transition states. So we got to draw these things in an anticoplanar fashion. All right, no problem. So my advice is just set it up as anticoplanar. Just do it. So let's do a line, carbon, iodine, and hydrogen. So that's anticoplanar right now. But we need to put the other things on here because this has stereochemistry. So now, let's imagine, and if you have a model, you can make a model, and this is really helpful here if you have models. Let's imagine we're pushing that iodine with our finger back into the plane of the paper. Right now it's coming at us. We want it to be on the plane. And don't forget, there is a hydrogen right here. Okay? So as we push the iodine back into the plane, the hydrogen, remember this is all circular as well, the hydrogen is going to loop up. So the hydrogen should be right here. Now if you don't see it with your mind's eye, make a model. Make a model of this. And as we push this iodine into the plane, the hydrogen comes up and the T-butyl must come forward. Remember, it's all a circle. It's all a circle. Okay. And the T-butyl will be here. Okay. Now, if we push this hydrogen up, don't forget there's a hydrogen here, right? There's a hydrogen right there. If we push this hydrogen forward, we grab it with our hand and yank it forward into the plane of the paper, that's going to make the methyl group go down and towards us. And the ethyl group is going to go down and away from us. Okay? All I did was I pushed the iodine into the plane and I pulled the hydrogen into the plane. Again, if you can't see it, model kits help a lot. Or you can do a Newman projection. And I'll, maybe I'll show you a Newman projection next. So now let's take the base. So say B minus. B minus is the sodium methoxide. It's going to deprotonate the hydrogen. The, pi the electrons from the, that bond are going to fall down to make a sigma bond. And the iodide is, iodine, sorry, the iodo is going to leave. All right? And that's how you set it up. Now, the key here is to notice that the methyl and the T-butyl are coming forward. The red hydrogen and the ethyl group are going backwards. So in other words, they're on the same side. In other words, they're quote-unquote cis to each other. This one and that one are on the same face. They're cis to each other. This one and that one are on the same face. They're cis to each other. Okay? So let's draw the outcome of that reaction. And let's put the methyl group here. And the ethyl group goes back here. And the red hydrogen will be here. All right? And that's how you do it. That's how I like to do these problems. I like to think in terms of this way. Now, a lot of students don't like this method, so I'm going to show you an alternative method. Okay? Right now, I'm not using Newman projections. I'm just using standard projection because I find it simpler in my own mind. Now, you may not like this, so let's go ahead and let's use Newman to do the same problem. I'm going to erase all of this. I'm going to do the first question as a Newman projection, and then I'll do the bottom one as both. Okay? So I'm going to erase all this right now. Poof, gone, back again. Let's do it as a Newman projection. So let's pretend that we're looking through that bond right there. So let's, and don't forget, there's a hydrogen here and a hydrogen here. 
All right. So let's draw the Newman circle. There you go. There's the back carbon. There's the front carbon. All right. So from this perspective of where this gentleman is standing, um, up, directly up from where he is, will be the T-butyl. So there's my T-butyl. Down and to this gentleman's left will be the iodine. There you go. Down and to this gentleman's right will be the hydrogen. Uh, let me change the color of the iodine. Let's make it black. And the hydrogen will keep it as red. There you go. That's the front carbon. That's this carbon right here. From this gentleman's perspective, the T-butyl is going up. Iodine is going down and to his left. And the hydrogen is going down and to his right. No problem. Let's look at the back carbon now. From this person's point of view, the back carbon, the ethyl group is straight down. There you go. Ethyl group straight down. Let's put up the hydrogen. Oops. Let's look at the hydrogen right here. It's going up and to the gentleman's right. And the methyl group is going up and to the gentleman's left. All right. Now from here you can see very clearly that the iodine and the hydrogen are anti. Very clearly you can see it. And they are indeed coplanar at this point. Um, so we can actually just do the mechanism from here, but I don't particularly like to do that, but you can. It's fine. So the base attacks there. I guess you'd put it there. I've never done a mechanism on a Newman before, and the iodine is going to come out like that. So now, that tells us right now that once this reaction happens, that the hydrogen and the ethyl are on the same side. The methyl and the T-butyl are on the same side. So that's where they're going to end up in the uh, outcome of the reaction. All right. So the product should be the hydrogen is, say, here, and the T-butyl is here. The hydrogen and the ethyl are on the same face or on the same side. So there they are. And the T-butyl and the methyl are on the same side. So there you go. And that's how you do that one using a Newman projection. That's how you can predict the stereochemical outcome using a Newman projection. All right, so now let's look at the second problem. Let's do the second problem together. Let's do it as a Newman first. So now we're going to put this person here. We're looking through that bond right there. The nice thing is, is that the front carbon is basically the same, because the only difference is the methyl group is up and down. That's the only difference. So the first, the front carbon doesn't even change. So you can just redraw it the same way you did it on top. There we go. Exactly the same as here, because the front car the carbon bearing the iodine didn't change. Just the back carbon did. Just, just that one did. So don't forget now there's going to be a hydrogen coming forward here, right? So now, the ethyl is in the same place. The hydrogen is up and to the left. And the methyl is up and to the right. Okay, that's good, right? That's good. So we've done quite a bit of work here already. But now notice the hydrogen that we're going to deprotonate and the iodine are not anti. They're, they're gauss, actually. So we have to move the hydrogen in the back to be anti to the iodine. In other words, we've got to move it so that it's in the same location as here. So we've got to rotate this bad boy this way, the back carbon. We've got to rotate the back carbon. So let's just do that. So it's going to become, front carbon is going to stay the same, however. So don't, don't get it twisted. There you go. So let's leave the iodine where it is. Let's leave the hydrogen where it is the front hydrogen, and the T-butyl will be up here. Hydrogen will be over here. And the methyl will be down here. And the ethyl will be up 
here. Now, I think you're already seeing it, right? This is anti to that, so that's fine. The T butyl and the ethyl group now are on the same side. They're, they're quote unquote sin to each other. The methyl and the hydrogen are on the same side. So that's a good indication. So now, let's go ahead and do the perspective or the side perspective drawing of the same thing. It's going to be exactly the same thing. So I'm just going to make a little divider right here, okay? So this is going to be the same as answer as this. I'm just going to show you the other method to do it. So now I like to do it this way. And if you like the Newman way, do it the Newman way. It's fine, 100% fine. Um, carbon, carbon, hydrogen, iodide. So now the iodine is like this. So the, make sure I don't mess this up now. The T butyl group is going to be here. And the hydrogen is going to be here. Uh, let's make the hydrogen red. Just to be consistent. So the hydrogen's in the plane. So now let's put in the methyl group, which would be back here. And the ethyl group will be forward. So let's draw it like that. Here comes the base. And now that's going to give us the carbon-carbon double bond. So we're going to have a hydrogen and a T-butyl group. Now according to this drawing, the ethyl and the T-butyl group are on the same side. So let's draw that in here. And the methyl and the hydrogen are on the same side. So let's draw that in there. So now, just as our Newman predicted, the T-butyl and the ethyl are on the same side. The methyl here and the hydrogen there are on the same side. And that's the same thing that was predicted here. We, did the, we got the exactly the same thing doing it in both methods. And comparing it to the opposite stereochemistry, notice here we get the hydrogen and ethyl on the same side. Switching to the other diastereomer, we get the methyl and the hydrogen on the same side. So we get a little different, well not a little different, a lot different, a stereochemical outcome just by using the other diastereomer. Okay, now I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, slap that like button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you're working on in your organic chemistry course. Maybe I can make a video just for you. And if you could, please subscribe to my channel. It really is helpful when you subscribe to YouTube Creators channels. It lets you two know we're doing a good job and keeps us encouraged to keep making more content for you guys. And with that, I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. We'll see you soon. Email drbets at protonmail.com if you would like a copy of every problem in this series.